All right, our next talk is going to be fused with Nix. Let's welcome Alexander and Arthur. Yep, hi guys. So hi it's us again, the corporate rats. Uh, we have out, <laughs> came out from our hiding. And we just want to share our experience with uh, using Fuse or solving the issue of using Nix uh, somewhere else, somewhere where you cannot really use the root directory to host the, the, the store. Um, and we'll take you through like a short journey of why it is an issue and what we were doing before and sort of what is the state of art that we have seen. Um, uh, so I will skip our bios. So what is the issue? So this is a very nice corporate statement of uh, what is our issue. So the issue was that uh, we wanted to have very small, thin containers that will have applications built with Nix. And then we want them to like, be move around quickly. So they, they really have to be tiny, tiny, tiny. But for the record, it's something that we see as an issue and not necessarily corporate. Yeah, and, and this is the, the non-corporate uh, slide. So essentially, every time when someone tells me to bake things into container, I just I clench my fist and I cannot. Because like Nix solves the issue of container. Why are we putting it in a container? Um, so th th this is our journey of solving that. So uh, maybe as a brief uh, explanation, the idea here that will be said later, we are forced to run on Kubernetes. I like Kubernetes, but the building block is a container. So ideally, we want this, and we want this manifest to be on the only information we provide to the cluster. I don't want this Nix store to be part of the container image. I don't want its dependencies inside. I don't want that because it just it, it gets big and unwieldy, and this is the only information we should ever need. Yeah, and it's already probably already stored in, in some remote cache. Yeah, probably so. already built. Uh, so here is another sh shameless plug of our project called Starter Kit. And th these are the base images that we are using. So as mentioned before, it is something that it's not even Linux compliant. It's nearly empty. Uh, here is an example of something that contains BusyBox and LD cache because we did our job badly. It shouldn't be there. Uh, but it's just one thing. It weights like below 200 kilobytes. Yeah, and it has 100% efficiency score, whatever yeah. it means. Yeah, so th this is what we want to use instead of something uh, big. Uh, and now I jump the gun a little, so a bit more of explanation, right? Uh, we have a lot of Kubernetes clusters. They are not controlled by us. We cannot influence how they look. They have security policies. Um, so, and there is this quirk of uh, disk space. Disk space is limited. Cleaning up it is difficult. Reaching out to infra team is difficult. Uh, so ideally, we don't want to overflow the disk space. We don't want to push those uh, images that contain the Nix store. Like it, 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 it's not really uh, something that should belong to the Kubernetes node, right? Yeah, it's just inefficient. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> uh, here, I, I wanted just to give you the overview if you never used Kubernetes before. The big idea is that you just have a row of nodes. Each node has a container runtime, and it is being executed there. So uh, if, you, for example, if the cluster, for example, decides that it wants to run an application on all of the nodes, like the image will just get sent to every node. And um, yeah, you, you are pulling a lot of information, and it's duplicated. Uh, and then it's not cleaned up by default. Um, so as stated, uh, uh, our issue is we have Nixtor, it is built, it is pushed, and then we are just duplicating and building it again and type tightly coupling it with manifest of YAML. Like you can automate it, but it's so unwieldy and heavy and uh, it, it's just a lot of busy work for no good reason. Mm. Yeah, and also these, these images quickly become outdated. Very because, quickly. Yeah, you need to rebuild them. Um, all right, so I, that's the, our problem. That, that's our mission statement, right? Uh, we could do this to solve it. So we could uh, shift everything runtime. So let's just download it on the node when it is being deployed, and then let's build it there. Um, yeah, this was one of the actual su suggestions we have received as a solution. And I hope I don't have to convince you too hard that it's not a solution. Because we are pushing build system onto the runtime, and then we are pushing not only the application, but its dependencies there. Uh, it's bedtime all around. Um, 
Uh, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I mean, you, s you sort of skipped the uh, part about shuffling layers, and that apparently is a quite, quite common thing to do, to find and optimize the uh, placement of packages so that the caching is, uh, or other placement of layers in container images as, is as efficient as possible to avoid uh, uh, rebuilds and reuse uh, as much as possible. And like going back to your point about building these things in the runtime, well, Nixery does does that like uh, sort of both both things. So it's like, for those of you who are not aware, I think all of you are. Uh, this uh, this thing uh, is a well, a container uh, container registry that that builds uh, uh, Docker images on the fly as they are requested. Yeah, and the name of the images were also the issue. If you know, know need a lot, like the name is really really funny. Uh, then we could use tools like Narserv, like to, to try to either pre-build the Im like images before time, fetching the dependencies, but then we are building images again. Or we can do it the runtime again, so we have something baked into the image that goes to the registry. It, it is getting better, but then it's really hard to, for people who are not familiar with the tool, to debug what's going on. Like if the file is not there, what happened? You have to be familiar with the application. Um, and this is like the, the most obvious thing ever. Right? Yeah, but then there is no no evaluation on the like lazy evaluation. It's just shared store, and it might be in some cases it might be might be uh, actually a good solution. But then it's it's uh, closely uh, related to the uh, to the placement of servers, like whether they are collocated or not. Yeah, and then also the the uh, version of NFS. If it's version three, then it's like a bit harder. Yeah, and as I mentioned, we live in hostile environment, so uh, no NFS for us unless we bring it ourselves. We are not keen on hosting our NFS. Uh, we could do this, like we accidentally re-implemented it before we uh, discovered that uh, uh, Elko implemented the uh, bound, bound for uh, Nick store. Like it's a hanging comment at, uh, commit at the moment, uh, but it's also not very performant. It, it, it has uh, issues. Uh, so. There is a lot of things you can use. Uh, there is a spoiler warning for the solution that is uh, out in the open, and we have, we have just discovered, uh, it. discovered it. So it's, it, it sticks, and it just does the lazy evaluation and on-demand uh, mounting of files. So just putting it out there. But then we are the uh, wonderful Bazel boys, so we also have issues with remote execution. So that's the, the problem, too. Uh, there is a hanging open issue in the rules Nix packages. It's 100. Like it's been done for, forever. Uh, I will just speed a little. Yeah, we already covered that covered partially that. On the, on during the previous presentation. So yeah. that is the part that we are trying to solve with, with this hacky solution, where we used a pre -comp or rather statically linked uh, GCC, but then in reality, uh, well, statically linked binaries are not so, not so uh, uh, popular. So we need to somehow address the problem of, of fetching tra transitive dependencies of a, of a specific package uh, on the fly. Yeah, the, the idea is here that we, we would like the Nix to somehow be either in the exec route or to magically appear somewhere. Uh, and this is just an overview to scare you into believing that it. it's difficult, but the idea is that uh, in the middle you have that empty deer and it is populated on the run with all of the dependencies. And when this is happening, somehow Nix store also has to appear either in there or somewhere adjacent. And it's not immediately obvious how to achieve that. So uh, that's an idea how to do that. Uh, we have been considering it. Uh, there is a fork of rules Nix packages that is trying to push the uh, Nix evaluation into the uh, build context. Uh, but it, it's really uh, unwieldy, and it has the big, 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 uh, big, big, big issue. It runs without sandboxing. Yes. So yeah. And the, the uh, changing changing uh, the default store path is obviously not a not a solution. Uh, well, it might be if you have enough time and, and resources to rebuild everything. Yeah. Uh, so what you can do is what uh, Native Link is doing. So you are building your image on the fly locally and uploading it. I hope you see that it doesn't solve our issue. It just pushes it further. Uh, we can modify the executors. That's Certainly an approach, but again, we are in a hostile environment. We are not allowed to touch too much. 
So for us, it's no go. Um, do you want to take the yeah? This, this project is actually, I think, one of the first inspirations for for this for this uh, fuse thingy that we developed. And this this project actually tries to rewrite uh, paths on the fly by essentially. Uh, that's a LD preload trick, I believe. Yeah. That identifies whatever whatever uh, 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 syscall that that contains reference to Nick's store and rewrites it to something else. But once again, it's it's it, it's not really applicable in all cases, yeah. especially and for static static binaries. Once again, and it's quite error prone overall and slow. Uh, and another inspiration was when Flux was introduced, like we also seen, like there, there was some fuse happening behind scenes. Like I think it's still closed source. I don't I, know. I can tell. Uh, but uh, this gave us the idea of how to approach it. And the idea is to use fuse to on demand, like lazily provide files. And although we cannot share our implementation, like we want to show you that it's not rocket science and you can do it quickly and it is performant enough in many cases. Uh, so again, uh, in this example, we will be using the star Kajit, which is like very minimal image that barely contains anything. Uh, again, I will be showing okay. this. And just the briefest overview of what is implemented in a hacky Python script you will see later, is that uh, literally the idea was uh, we, have, we have the manifest that says what wants to be run, and there is a uniform sidecar that is attached to every pod. And this sidecar can, uh, can act as this fuse provider, it, it can da, da do caching. Uh, and there is this magic box up there. Uh, it's part that we won't be showing, but you can implement a lot of logic within that magic box. So there is nothing stopping you, for example, for even um, addressing the situation in which the user is asking for something that has not yet been built, but somehow it has been registered. Um, so it, it, it's just up to your imagination what is possible with, with and the point I'm trying to make, it's uh, people were often saying that Fuse is not performant enough. Our Python hacky script seems to be good enough for like 70% of our use cases, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not that difficult. Uh, and the code of the POC is available <laughs> here. Um, and now the demo time. So yeah. I will just shift it here, step aside. Where am I? Oh, there it is. So yeah, uh, the demo is pretty simple because uh, we just simulate uh, the setup where we have like one container, one container, one sidecar, and this sidecar being, well, pretty much uh, a uh, some random random Ubuntu image with Python because the the uh, the whole. Uh, application is just uh, just a single Python file, and, but it doesn't really contain any any any, any like exotic uh, modules, and we register it or rather mount it as something called storefs because uh, we after some time we real, realized that there is something uh, some other project that is that is called nixfs, uh, so we had to change it a bit. Then obviously we need to pass this this fuse device. And we mount this TMP directory, which is which is stored on the host. That is the, the shared part across across two containers, into container under root slash nix, and then we mark it as shared. So that's the server part, and on the right hand side we'll just run this starter kit image that contains almost nothing. It's ex extremely dirty, but the idea is to show it. Yes. Yeah. So what happens here? We just run it and use the same, the same store path, but mounted under under Nix. So where is that? There it is. So the TMP from host in the client container is mounted under slash Nix, and then all we need to do is just to access the store path that we want to want to be fetched. Right, and yeah. then on the left-hand side, after we access that that store path, this uh, this uh, um, application uh, looks up the NAR that contains the specific store path, and it's all of its transitive dependencies. 
but the transitive dependencies are, are not really evaluated in any way. It's just that the, the binary that we fetched has some references to other store paths. So the, the whole thing repeats over and over again until, until all store, store paths are satisfied. Can, can you perhaps show the, the, the script that we are running? Uh, because one point I'm trying to make is I am doing a lot of self-depreciation self with this Python script. There you go. But the, but the point is you have seen how quickly it, it worked. Uh, so it wasn't really a nightmare. I know it has like 400 lines. So this is spaghetti. Imagine what you can get if you re rewrite it in like a language that is statically compiled and you throw in a, like a proper concurrency. Like I, I highly doubt there are like many use cases in which it is not good enough. Yeah, so this, this implementation is based on Fuse tool. So it's like, uh, it's a bit slow, especially for, for, uh, for parallel access, but it has some, uh, uh, some caching mechanisms that, that uh, verify whether a specific store path uh, has, uh, is already already being uh, resolved. So, say if we have this, uh, I don't know, we want to access something from from glibc store path that contains a bunch of files, then uh, uh, one if if there is one thread that already fetches and and unpacks a specific NAR file, then for any any other uh, file that that c comes from the same store path then these threads will be essentially put on hold just to just to the duplicate work needed. And then there is also some in-memory in caching. And obviously the the state, the, I mean this this uh, this well mounted mixture that we that we uh, in here we share using this TMP directory on the host uh, host path, this thing is also persistent. So we can just run this thing again and and uh, reuse whatever's whatever's uh, had been fetched previously. Yeah. So the point is, like, we are making good on time, but the, 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 the point I was trying to make is, like, don't be afraid of uh, using the fuse, because I feel there is, like, plenty of information that it won't perform. It does actually pretty all right without any optimization yeah. in most cases. And that's, that's it. Yeah. Got a first question here. Hey, thanks for the talk. <clears throat> Looks like a nice hacky solution. Uh, first of all, how do you get fuse in your Kubernetes deployments? Uh, currently, that's I believe that's possible with the most more recent versions of Kubernetes. That uh, because previously that required uh, uh, elevated permissions, and I think with more recent versions there is there is already a, a uh, driver in Alpha. That allows allows uh, for unprivileged uh, fuse mounts. But we have we have only heard of it. Like th this was all like a POC work. Like the the pro production grade is like we are we said still are pre rolling out. But we are feeling pretty good about it. And did you look into Nick snapshot here? Nope. Nope. But after this question, I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, how do you deal with garbage collection? Because you know, when you have like a typical setup, you can run this Nix GC and tracks you know the dependencies from the root, whatever, and it removes all of the stuff that it's not needed anymore. But under this setup, I guess it's it would be difficult for it to you know find out what's actually used since you actually sort of fetch it to the sidecore application. So I'm wondering if you do anything special about that, or maybe it's. Uh, or maybe it's not, not, not a problem because I'm not seeing anything else. That's a great question. And the answer is we don't do anything about that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Hi, great talk. Uh, I happen to work with the old version of the Flux version of that. And uh, there's other people who work at, at Flux here who know a lot about it. But a uh, couple comments. You can do a garbage collection because the you can see who's using files and get rid of them when they're not being used. And also, you can tell the kernel to cache files for you so that it becomes very fast reads. But yes, great work. And uh, Fuse, Fuse is very awesome. Thank you. More questions? Yes. Just a remark, if you are um, regarding Fuse performances, 
uh, the CERN gave a talk at the last kernel recipes where they are transferring a huge amount of data via Fuse. So I don't think you have to care about uh, Fuse. Perfect. Wonderful. Right. We've got time for more, if you want. I don't see anything. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. All right. Let's thank our speakers again. <laughs> <laughs>